beautiful painting, Rocky Mountain High, number two. And again, i got to give you a little history on this painting right quick for those of you who missed the last program or the first program. Um, this was the original painting. Many of you have already seen this. You may have already uh, painted it if you're an oil painter because that was its original intent was to show the oil painter specifically how to underpaint with an acrylic, uh, you know, underpainting and create your basic forms and shapes and then overpaint with oil. So I came in here on the set with this blocked in in acrylic and it was kind of not completely finished, but far enough along that I could see all the issue, work out the composition, design, perspective and all that stuff. And then I overpaint with oil because you can do that. You can underpaint with acrylic nowadays. And overpaint with oil. Now you can't do the other. You can't overpaint with acrylic on top of oil. So we settled that little thing and showed you how to do that. But then it stirred up a controversy of, hey, all of the acrylic painters started calling and writing, saying, well, I want to do that painting, but I want to know how to do it from scratch, from beginning to end in acrylic. So that's what we're doing. Really simple matter of just redoing the painting in acrylic so that you guys can see how to do it. And I think it's a fair thing, and it's a wonderful learning experience as you can tell already. This is a 20 by 24. Stretch canvas. We've already done a lot of work. We're pretty much done with the basic underpainting. We do have to underpaint the cabin, but right now we're going to block in the first phase of the stream and the waterfall, and then we're going to block in the cabin and begin the intermediate uh, details. And then we've got one more program after this to put the final things in. So let's get to work here. I'm going to go now to my number six chisel edged brush, and I want you to take a little bit of um, white. And put just a little bit of ultramarine blue and a tinge of purple. Just, you really basically, all you're doing is tinting the white. Let me say something about that. I hear a lot of people say, well, what's the difference between a tint and a color? Well, a tint is just that. It's just when you, you take a color, specifically white, and you add something to it to slightly change it. Not to change it to another color, just make the white less white, basically. You tint something by slightly changing it. And that's all we're doing. We're taking the white, and we're just slightly changing it to where it's not white anymore. It's kind of a bluish white or a purplish white or a grayish white, whatever. And then you use that. That's why when you go to the paint store, they, you know, when you mix paint, they get the base. It's called tint base this or that because the white's tinted to go with that color they want to mix for you. All right. Now, take this color. We'll start with here at the waterfall. And I want you to put a little bit of a ridge across the top of it like that. Okay. Now, the thing about this, you guys, is you've got to be very careful how you pull this water over. You start like this, and you drag the brush. I'm dragging it. And you keep most of the highlight towards the center. And, of course, it's more turbulent down here at the bottom, so you kind of make these little hook strokes. I'm kind of hooking it like this, and that makes it look like the water is moving. And then we'll come back later with some brighter highlights to give it just a little bit more, you know, pizzazz, so to speak. Now, the mistake, and just recently, that I have seen a lot of people make is they take the white from end to end and they make the whole thing white. And it just looks like icing on a cake. And you don't want to do that. See, I'm kind of skimming it and letting some of the background underpainting come through. And then you make some little turbulence. And then down here at the bottom... You take your brush and you make these little sort of, um, you know, banana strokes, kind of go different directions to create the little splash at the base. Just kind of use a lot of different odd strokes to kind of tie into it. You can take your toothbrush if you want to and splatter some little splatters. And if I remember, and we have time, we'll do that in the next week. But you can do all kinds of fun things. What I'm doing right now is just kind of tying the waterfall into the main body of water here. And you have to do a similar thing on the top of the waterfall coming from the stream. So that way don't, you just stud just on the end. See how it kind of all ties in nicely? Now going back here to the water, the stream, to do a similar thing. I'm going to start right back here. You can have some nice little, uh, you might say they're not waterfalls, they're just little trickles going over some more rock formations and you just kind of keep the light more towards the center of the water again don't get too much highlight all the way up to the edge it's normally darker towards the edges of the stream river 
or what it is you're doing. And dark in this area back here, a little bit of a pull over right there where there might be one turning the corner. That's just a highlight in the water going around back there. And see, all of a sudden, this painting's starting to look alive. And highlighting is what it's all about. Let's think of it for a minute. Look, if you turned all the lights off in your house, your studio, or your room you're in right now, you wouldn't see anything. Because there's no light, there's no shadows. It's light and shadow that makes something work. So that's why you can just take a simple brush stroke, and all of a sudden something appears. Of course, you've got to know where to put the right brush stroke at the right time in the right place, but then... The less, that's the principle behind it. Now, once you get it locked in, we'll let that set for excuse me a second. Now, take your number four bristle brush, and underneath the the rock formations here, let's go over here to the original um, study painting here. See, underneath here, you have the, the kind of reflections. See, it's darker. See, it's darker along the edges, and it's just highlighted in the center. So we've got to put some reflections from these rocks here and here. They're okay back in here probably. And then sometime today or in our next program, we'll begin highlighting and bringing things up. Right now, we're still trying to get everything blocked in. So right now, let's scrub in our little bit of reflection. And that'll be back to your grays. So you just take a little bit of your blue and your brown. Go back to sort of that rock, rock color. And yeah, a little more brown. There we go. Now, you kind of scrub it like this. And you just kind of feather it. And if you have to use your finger, but you've got to scrub this in so it creates a nice, soft kind of blurriness right underneath here. Kind of the shape of those rocks. Then when you put the ripples on here, and the little glaze, you just kind of glaze over that. A little reflection from this one. And let's don't get these confused. These are reflections, not shadows. I hear this every day almost back at the studio when I have students in. They call these for, these are reflections, not shadows. Reflection and shadows have zero relationship to each other. A reflection is based on the object reflecting itself into something, a, you know, a mirror or water or whatever it is. And it's not based on, has nothing to do with the sun. A shadow has everything to do with the sun. You, the length of a shadow, I mean, a reflection, the location of a reflection space of where you're standing in relation to the object that's being reflected. A shadow, on the other hand, its length and its location is based on where the sun's located in relation to the object and it casts a shadow on another object. So those two are completely separate. So I gotta keep those things in mind. Now, I went back between programs a little bit more structure into my rocks as you can see and now that we've got everything in we're going to block in the cabin now that's the last major block in except for the large dead pine tree over here which we'll probably put that in here in a minute as well so right now let's go to our number four chisel edge brush and let's go on the left side of our building here and we'll go back to your gray maybe a little bit of umber in there bend it down nicely and we're going to quickly we may almost just completely finish this building that way it's behind us so you want to get this value similar to the value of everything. Like, see these trees right here? This building has to be in the same value range as these. So that's why you don't want to get this too dark. But at the same time, you don't want it to be too light. So there's the dark side. Now you can slightly lighten it by adding just a little white to the mixture. And you can erase that charcoal later, folks, when you, when you get ready to detail this thing here in a minute. You can erase that any charcoal that's showing now. So there's your roof. Now we'll do the front. All you do is add just a little more white. So see, you're working on that same gray pile. Now all you do is just change the value by adding a little more white each time. And this time I'm going to add a little bit of orange to it to warm it up because the sun's hitting that front part of the building. down following the angle of the roof. See, I just turn the angle of the uh, brush to fit the shape of the, the pitch on the roof. And 
Did you like these little lean to? I love these little lean tos on these buildings. I don't know when I was younger growing up, and one of my favorite things to do was go out and travel around the countryside. I finally got my driver's license and had a, a pickup truck. I mean, I'll tell you what, you just turned me loose on a Saturday uh, weekend. And uh, as a young artist, I just had more fun researching old buildings, barns, outhouses, anything I could find, windmills. Now, see, that's structured and it's blocked in, so we're in good shape there. Now, let's take our white charcoal pencil and let's kind of stitch in where this large tree goes here. Now, this is a large dead pine tree, but it's our anchor and sort of our eye stopper on this side of the thing. It's a pretty large tree. So let's go ahead and make sure that we get this in there. And it's pretty tall. It goes almost to the top of the canvas. In fact, it could go to the top of the canvas as far as I'm concerned. It won't hurt anything. But the key is to get it fat enough that it does what it's designed to do. So that's about where it should go. Now, all you want to do with that is take one of your bristle brushes, the four or the six, either one, and you just put a lot of dark paint on here real quick, just thick, choppy, vertical strokes. You can put purple, umber, sienna, blue, anything. Just put it on like this, nice and thick. And then when it dries, we'll, we'll highlight it. But it's best to use these little short choppy strokes. Now you have seen me in the past, and in some cases it's very important. I don't think it would be quite as appropriate for this painting. Where you put the paint on real thick and then take the end of your brush and scratch it, and it makes that texture, you know, like bark, really is a great tool for that. But in this case, I don't think we'll do that. Uh, I think I'll, I'll go back to sort of a semi-traditional way of highlighting or putting the bark on the tree. Irregardless, you want to get the paint on thick enough that it covers fairly well. Now, sometimes when I get it to that point, I'll take my one of my chisel edge brushes, the four or the six, and I use it to kind of clean up the edge. Now, what I mean by that is, no, don't make a straight edge or a real hard edge, but I want to get my edge where I can fill in and pull sideways like this. If I can do this without my hand hiding and stuff, sometimes it's good to do this. And you can make it look a little bit more rough on the edge in terms of it looking more like bark. So that's what I mean by cleaning it up, giving it a better shape. Not necessarily a straight line. You can do that to this side too, just by turning your canvas like this. And I can pull it like this. We normally do our trees this way. And then you can get your little broken things up in here. See for the where it's broken off. That. I want to get this, you know, probably even get in the way, but I have to do this. Let me get this part up here. And I probably want to fatten that up there. I think that's a little skinny for that. But anyway, that's, you can just have fun making whatever configuration you want at the top for your broken one. And yes, there will be some, um, Probably some, you know, broken rings like these. And off the edge, looks a little fat, so we'll go ahead and make it. In fact, look like that, that's bugging me. So this where you can take a little paper towel and wet it, and I'll wipe it back in, so you just wipe it right off. And so when you make a mistake like that, uh, just remember there's always a way to out of it. So just wipe back into the object and just watch it right off and then you can go back and patch it right up with all. No problems. Another thing about acrylic, you have up to usually about a minute to two minutes sometimes if you have a problem and you want to clean it up. You can spray with your paint and with your spray bottle even and, and then wipe it off. Usually you get it a lot of, not all of it off. Any of these little guys on here as you want, again, also here making some good composition. And I feel pretty good about that. Yeah, it looks good in there. 
Now there's some smaller trees back in here too that will kind of dot the landscape here that we can use your script brush for or some other brush later. Okay, I think that's dry enough now that we can detail our building. I'm going to do most of my finished work with the um, number two uh, chisel edge brush and probably my script brush. Pull this little guy out here. I know some of you are panicked when you hear the word script brush, but you know, some point in time you got to use it. So right now, we're going to go ahead and start some of the details on this. First step is to put the doors and windows in. So let's go back to your dark color, blue, brown, whatever it requires here. And you put those doors and windows wherever you want on. I'm just going to put, I think I'll put my door right there, kind of like I have in the original. And usually these brushes are almost the exact size, just like making one stroke. And a couple of windows. So there's that. There should be an overhang shadow. Now this will give you the depth of the overhang that you know we see up underneath the, the eaves. So there'll be a cast shadow here. And then when we highlight it, you'll see how cool this looks. So right now, just take it and kind of angle your brush down here like this. A little shadow right there. There really is one on this side too. It doesn't show up as much because of the shadow already there. But nonetheless, I do that just as a practical matter. A little overhang shadow here. But you won't notice that looking like much until you highlight that in just a second. And you usually shadow up underneath here just a little bit. In the underneath the eaves there, where it's up in the corner. A little soft shadow there. Now I'm going to highlight my roof just a little bit because I want it to be a little bit lighter. So just take a little bit of this muddy white down here. Maybe a little orange, and you don't have now. Here it goes back to this thing we've talked about before. This is sort of an impressionistic approach called suggestionism. You know, you're just going to suggest some things. And I know most of us know that this is an old, probably a shaped shingled roof. So, what you've got to do is just put some real, you know, rough strokes on it. So, just start up here like this and just make a bunch of little. Strokes like this that are kind of at the angle of the roof. And then you can come in with your script brush. There's a little cracks in there. And you can put a little chimney up there. And this will be kind of fun. You'll see this is a cool little thing to do. So there's your little square. Now, I'm going to actually erase any charcoal that's bugging me around the edge there. Now it's going to be a little highlight right on the back of this little lean to shed. Okay, now I'm going to take my script brush here and I'm going to take a little bit of white, a little bit of orange, and you kind of really make a thick low just kind of twist your brush around in there and I want you to skim the surface of it right on this edge like this see that will be the little highlight on the ridge of the roof right there see how it pops that out you do the same thing on this side and skim it wiggle it a little bit so it's not so perfectly straight See, that's the little ridge there where the, I got a little heavy right there, but you can, you know, that's pretty much it for now. Now, you want to put a light in the window. What I normally do is take like a number four round sable. And you can just take pure yellow or orange or yellow and orange mixed together. Maybe a little red. I mean, just take all those colors. You got to put the paint on real thick, folks, if you want this to work right. See how thick that is? You come up here and you just make a quick stroke right here. And another stroke right there, if you want two of them. And, but that paint's real thick, and then you can kind of tap in some brighter color, like some pure yellow in the center, you know, because it would be modeled, the color would be modeled in the window. Anyway, put a little more red in it, whatever you want to. But see how nice that glows? Really looks good. You put one in the, maybe there's a little 
and here on that door. Now, once that's in there, then you can go back with the little number two chisel edge brush and even bright looking streaks on the front of the building. And I'm just going to go back to white with a little orange. <clears throat> and start streaking the front just a little bit to give it a little bit of flavor. You want to brighten it up just a little bit. But you also want it to look more like old leather wood. So, you know, just streak it like this. I'm going to get that chiseled though. Just, it's called skimming, dry brush skimming. And you leave some of the background coming through just like old weathered wood. Really looks good. And it's fun. And also, it's a good way to kind of clean up your windows and doors and, you know, do all kinds of fun little things. So it gives your building a little bit more light and character. You can, you know, put some grass up around the base of it. You can brighten it up even more if you want to. You can do all kinds of cool things. You know, see how that's really looking good. Now you can put just a little bit of skimming on the left side so it's just not so solid. And if you're real careful, just do this real light, you guys. This is back to that feather stroking. I want a little bit of character on this side. So just skim it lightly. And so you can get just a little bit of detail over here. Don't need much. But that's still the shadowed side, so that makes it look wood. Now let's put our little chimney up here. Go back to your little number four round sable. And just take a little bit of the dark gray. Kind of just, just be a stove pipe without really into being. And just make a little stroke down. Just run across. See, that creates the cat shadow. You can put a little highlight with the orange and white on the right side, then a little smoke coming out of the chimney. And except for whatever little details you want to put in there, maybe a little old fence or something, which we'll probably put in there. You, you got it. A little highlight there. Look, look what I just did. See, I touched that with my finger. See it again? A little wet paper towel. And there you have it. Okay, now if you want to put a little smoke there, take a little white right on the end of your brush, put a little tap of it right there on the top of the chimney, and go out like this, and then take your finger and just kind of blur it out like that. And that kind of makes it look like the smoke coming out of the chimney. Now I'm going to take my script brush, go back down here and kind of make an old, kind of a grayish white. And I put the little broken fence that's in here. I want, I like this contrast against the wall here. And this gives us the details around the building that we've been needing. And it just, you know, it's just there. It's an old fence. It's, for whatever reason, ain't been a corral there or something. And then, uh, there's a little section of one over here. It just adds a little character to the painting, makes it look like they had something in there, some chickens maybe, or, Horses or whatever, or a garden. Just kind of let feather out into that darkness. See how that contrast works? <laughs> I love that effect. Contrast is so important, folks, because that's what gives the painting its character. All right, now back to this tree here. We'll go ahead and go back to your number four chisel edge brush. I think, though, that's still a little wet. Let's let that set a little bit longer. Let's put the next level of light on the waterfall. So now you switch to the number two chisel edge brush. Get it real cleaned out. Now this is one of those times when you can use pure white and get away with it. Because some of the inner paint will come through and I'm just going to mix it up here on this lid because I don't want to see that. Get a nice even distribution of that white right on the brush. Now I'm going to cap the top like this. And you pull over. Just keep it kind of stumbling. Drag it down. Now 
And like I said before, it's the white you want to stay right more towards the center. That's where your eye will stay focused and seeing and works a lot better to your advantage. And here's another little section. You know, there's probably other rocks down here in the water that you can't see because you know they're covered up with the turbulence of the movement of the water that hits the, the base here. They just kind of go along the base and you just kind of flip up your brush like this. Kind of, again, get some little brighter spots. And as usual, we're about to run out of time. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn you loose. And here's the way, if you can, go back in here now and get your building in there. Get your build, your tree in there. So everything, finish up anything, your rock formations, get your highlights on your water done. And what we're going to do next week is finish up the rocks, the water, and the little other details like the weeds, the flowers, the dead trees, other things that go in here to make this look more finished and dimensional, and all the sunlight on the meadows, and just a few things. It's going to be fun. Uh, we may do a little toothbrush work here to show you how you can put some little splatter to make it look really cool. So we'll have a good time finishing this up, and then, of course, you can kind of put your own little flavor to it if you want to when you get in position. You might want to add some different kinds of flowers, or you might want to put a deer in there, all kinds of fun things you can do with a thing like this, folks.